Take you back out live to outside of the courthouse in Kenosha, Wisconsin, where jurors have returned their verdict against Kyle Rittenhouse and that verdict clearing him of all of the charges against him. We do know that the National Guard was mobilized in Wisconsin, potentially in case there were any protests. We have not seen anything like that develop in this area so far. There's been a lot of emotion outside of the courthouse over the last few days. Folks who think that Kyle Rittenhouse should have been convicted and those who were supporting him. We have reestablished our connection with attorney Mark Reichel, who is back with us to talk about this verdict. And again, Mark, we were just chatting about the fact that when we talked to you after closing arguments, you were sure that the prosecutors had gotten across their message to the jurors, but not the case. Yes, I definitely thought they were going to get a lesser included. I, I had a feeling that maybe first degree murder was going to be a little bit too serious and too much for this jury to actually be willing to tackle for all that it, it you know, takes for them to do something like that. And obviously self-defense, when the person takes a stand and sits there and tells you they really truly, you know, in their heart of hearts were scared for their life, uh, jurors put themselves in the position of the person that, you know, that had the gun, the person that had things that they had to fire. But more importantly here, I think it's really the community in Wisconsin. This is an open carry state, an open carry state where you can legally walk down, you know, carry an AR, uh, you know, down the street and so forth. So that kind of conditions each member of the community into thinking it's normal and it's okay for somebody to be carrying a firearm down the street. And then you throw in what, you know, they saw as these, you know, violent riots where there was burning and arson and so forth and destruction of property and everything. I think it gets the jurors more conditioned to accept something like this where someone comes in and says self-defense. I mean, I think there's a lot of arguments with, you know, against that, but uh -huh. uh, they spoke. I was convinced they were going to find a lesser included, but not the first most serious count. Let's just go over what those counts were. He was facing first degree intentional homicide, first degree reckless homicide, and also first degree attempted intentional homicide. Um, one of those, the first degree intentional homicide, he could have received a life sentence. We do know that the jurors during their deliberations asked to look at the video again and that the defense for Rittenhouse uh, was concerned about that, saying that they were concerned about the video quality and that what the jurors were seeing over and over, they wanted to limit the number of times that they saw the video because what they had been able to see during discovery was much lesser quality and they were concerned about the quality of the video but apparently that also did not matter to the jurors no it sounds like they obviously they did their job they took piece by piece every single you know aspect of the evidence and took a good look at it they obviously deliberated for a while and thought about things but you know like i say what it really comes back to is you know if someone can prove a partial self-defense they can get an acquittal if they can prove that they reasonably feared this, even though they were incorrect, but a reasonable person in their situation would have felt that way. That's something that can resonate with jurors. I mean, you're going to have jurors in this town in Wisconsin, you know, an open carry state that had been, uh, you know, subject to um, protests, extended protests. So as a result, this is their way of speaking. You know, I may not agree with the verdict, but at least I understand how they came to it. And definitely folks in California, just because we have a different mindset overall, legally and just, you know, socially when it comes to guns, maybe really looking at this very differently and just not understanding what you're pointing out about just sort of the mindset that's left in the community when we're talking about an open carry state. Yeah, well, we all see, you know, this kid walking down the street with an AR, you know, gun, and it's shocking to us. But obviously in Wisconsin, in an open carry state, Texas as well. That's not that shocking to them. And so you take that away and then you say, you know, this guy's being attacked at this point. You know, don't get me wrong. I mean, Rittenhouse could have been charged with assault in different ways that, you know, over that period that he was there. He was pointing guns at people for no reason, just because he wanted to. He was never charged with those crimes. But then when he does fire on these three individuals, obviously, he got charged because they're more serious charges. All righty. Thank you so much for your insight this morning on these breaking developments. We appreciate you. Thank you very much.